what we're going to look at next is the capabilities that the ES1 offers us um, in recreating some retro drum sounds. So what we're going to do is I've programmed a really simple loop and that's going to uh, consist of a kick drum here. This is actually going to be the drone of the kick drum. I've got another MIDI set, um, MIDI file showing uh, it's exactly the same pattern. This is going to be the attacky part of the kick drum. So we're going to make two, two elements of a kick. And then we've also got our snare. So that's on the two and four divisions of the bell. And then I've got the hi-hat part in here as well. So what we're going to do first is just go through and, uh, and make the kick drum. So it's going to load up an ES1. And to start with, we're going to make the drone sort of the low subby sound to the kick and what we're going to do there is um, via the mix select here just completely move it right down to the sub so moving the mix selector wave right down to the sub here we're going to completely isolate this oscillator here next we're going to move it to the white noise generator and then furthermore just put the octave right down as low as it will possibly go so I'm just going to give that a play now. So you can hear it's still a long, long way away from being where I want it to be. Uh, next I'm going to do is move on to the filter section. So smash the resonance right up high. This is going to give us our sort of um, squelchy drone sound. And then I'm going to move the filter right down so it's nice and muted. want as much power from the drone as I can. Um, so I'm going to put the drive right up to full, give it a slight bit of distortion and then just move these phases just so they're together and then pull them down slightly. This is going to um, let the filter behave in such a way that it's going to have a really low sub sound. So you can hear if I move this key slider up, you can hear that more of that sound's coming back so we want to get rid of that so we're just going to pull that down like that. Next we're going to look at the envelope generator. You can hear there's a quite a bit of click on the end of the sound. So I'm just going to pull the release up. And I'm going to take all the sustain out because I want it to be a, a kick so there's more percussive uh, attack to the sound. Just going to turn it up for you guys so you can hear properly. Pull the number of voices down, we don't need to have a polyphonic synthesizer for this, just needs to be in the one. And just push the output up. So now if I play the sound, you can hear it starting to resemble a low sub uh, drone of the kick drum. Just going to turn all the LFO modulation to off, so just pull the sliders down and make sure these are both either at zero or completely full. And then finally, what I'm going to do is just play around with the slopes on the filter, see if I can get a more punchy sound. So you can hear as I moved around the slopes of the filter, the sound really um, became a lot more subby and a lot more what we're after. So using the TB303 recreation slope there, that's the one I'm going to use. It's got a little bit more air with it. Um, all I'm going to do now is just turn the output level slightly down a bit so it's not driving so hard. And Just going to pull the attack down and a bit more decay down and push some release up. So there we have our first part to the kick drum, that's the sub.